Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV from London. With us today is Angus Campbell. He is Senior Analyst at FX Pro. Angus, good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us again. Pleasure. Okay, overnight we had the minutes of the last FOMC meeting. meeting. There was a Bloomberg headline that called the attention of all analysts and everybody was highlighting it uh, last night. The headline in, on Bloomberg was, Fed officials say that forecasts overstate pace of rate rise. Markets inter interpreted this automatically as a very dovish signal, a very dovish signal which was set on purpose. Do you think that's a fair interpretation of that headline? I'd certainly think that that is a fair interpretation. I mean, the, the thing that Janet Yellen has had to deal with, of course, since she uh, became the Federal Reserve Chairman only this year is, is how she deals with communicating more. Now, of course, the Fed has mm done a lot to improve its communication. It has press conferences after decisions. Uh, it's trying to expand uh, its communique. And she hasn't managed to deal with it particularly well, because of course we remember earlier in the year, she was saying when asked, uh, you know, when will interest rates rise? She yes. said, oh, well, six months after- mm -hmm. uh, Off the after, cuff. After, exactly, after tapering ends. So everyone's like penciling in, you know, beginning of 2015, mm -hmm. middle of 2015. And everyone interpreted that being as a very, very hawkish statement to make. Uh, of, of course, in hindsight, she's uh, thinking she needs to probably play her cards a lot closer to her chest. Mm -hmm. Now, the minutes have always been the minutes, and, and I think that they have tried to tone down that hawkish mm -hmm. sentiment because they've been very consistent in saying that, you know, we will taper, we'll temper at a, a taper at a pace that we're comfortable with, that will end at some point this year. Uh, as regards interest rate hikes, the end of tapering does not automatically mean that interest rate hikes will follow anytime soon specifically. So you've got to discount that six month uh, comment that she made now altogether really. Okay. Uh, and, and so I think people pushed back the the, the, the date for the first rate hike. Uh, and that is in, in, you know, very dovish as a result. So we saw um, the dollar completely reverse its move since the middle of March. Uh, and uh, yields uh, on the 10 year that have been sort of ticking higher ahead of the minutes uh, fell back. So yes, very much interpreted as a, a dovish set of minutes when tapering is over. We're not gonna see an interest rate hike, I don't think from the Federal Reserve for, for you know, probably beyond six months. You, okay, right now, Fed funds futures are pricing in the first rate rise for mid-2015. A few analysts, the most aggressive, the most hawkish, think that there is a risk if non-farm payrolls continue to increase at the, at the recent pace of about 200,000 per month, that perhaps Fed funds might come forward somewhere towards the Q, beginning of Q2 of 2015, or perhaps even around March. It's a very minority view, but is there a risk of that? There perhaps is, we there's that always a, the, yeah, there's always a risk, Alex. There's, there's, you know, that you have to factor that potential in, but let's face it, the central banks over the last few years have been dovish. They've been easing monetary policy, like you know, we've never seen before. In, if you compare to other central banks, we're just seeing the European Central Bank kind of entering that phase, or at least talking about it anyway. The Bank of England, you know, the, the, the people are talking up the UK economy. Yes, it's improving and things like that. Oh, interest rates have to rise. Um, you know, the Bank of England today, obviously, a case in point, but they're not going to rise. I, uh, you know, uh, my view is that the Bank of England, whilst meant, meant to be incredibly independent, <laughs> You know, there's, a, there's, I'm sure, pressure from various areas. I don't want to, you know, name any names or anything like that. But, you know, we do have a general election next year. And I don't think that the Bank of England will be looking to raise rates ahead of then. Uh, not that it's meant to take any stance on politics, of course. But, you know, you have to factor that in as well to the equation. Mm -hmm. I think that easing or loose monetary policy is here today. I don't think we'll see interest rate rate uh, hikes for some time. Okay. However, growth forecasts, the IMF, the latest growth forecasts from the Washington-based lender for the UK economy are 2.9% for this year, 2.5% for next year. That's actually a relatively quick rate of growth. We'll be past the pre-financial crisis peak. You really do not believe that it's interest rates should go up just a little bit? Well, I mean, it's, 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 
I can say whatever I want, but the Bank of England's not going to listen. I mean, I personally think that interest rates should rise sooner than later, but um, I, I, I'm absolutely convinced that despite the UK being the fastest rising, growing economy in the G7, uh, something that's never done very often, um, will not translate to higher rates. I think that, you know, that the, the Mark Carney is has been very, very clear, perfectly clear mm. in saying that, you know, there have to be a number of conditions now, not mm. just unemployment that's met. He's changed and tweaked his forward guidance, you know, mm. spare capacity is what he's talking about. And you've got on one hand a minority saying that we're at capacity, on the other hand a lot of people are saying there is spare capacity in the economy. So I think that interest rate hikes, um, you know, are, are a long way off because mm-hmm. um, you have to also consider what impact that will have on you know mortgage uh, mm-hmm. borrowers you know there are a lot of people who have a mortgage in the UK and uh, and even uh, a small rise in interest rates could uh, seriously hamper consumer you know the consumer in the UK okay could seriously hamper the UK consumer that's well, interesting. Not seriously hamper but i mean you know it will have an effect on the mm-hmm. consumer in the UK and a knock on effect to the economy okay going back to the fed um, going through the different commentary that was out overnight some people were saying that as regards to the last set of FOMC projections for interest rate increases, the median expectation that that could overstate what voting members expect. In the past, ex-Fed chairman Ben Bernick specifically stated, don't look at the forecast for the entire FOMC, look at the forecast, concentrate on the forecasts from those members which have a vote this year. So in that sense, perhaps, would you, do you believe that that is perhaps something we ought to take into account when interpreting those forecasts? Yeah, certainly you need to look at the, the people that have the votes. What, they, what are they saying at their various press conferences? You know, where's their view? I mean, there, there, are, um, there are hawkish opinions within the Fed, but, you know, Janet Yellen has the final say. So, uh, you know, she, is, she has always been quite a dovish, uh, you know, economist. So... I don't think that's going to change the stance at all, really.